Our next guest is an award-winning writer, Brown University professor and scholar of African-American culture, racial inequality, and gender. Her latest book, Meta Racism, How Systemic Racism Devastates Black Lives and How We Break Free, provides an essential account on, of American inequality and what we can do to change it. Professor Tricia Rose joins us now to unpack her findings. So in plain language for us, explain what meta-racism is. Meta-racism is the outcome of systems that produce effects that are greater than the sum of their parts. So if you are thinking about health care and how access to health care might have an impact on jobs, and jobs might have an impact on schools, and schools might have an impact on housing, those interactions and interconnections produce effects that are more powerful than if you had any one of these alone. And so instead of just adding them, you have to think these are compounding mm. effects. And that's one of the things that my research has been able to reveal is that we can't think as if these moments of discrimination in each individual place is in fact to be understood separately. When you see them together, that's when you get the devastation. And you've been doing this research now for more than a decade. Why did you decide now was the time and that you were going to write a book about it? Well, I had been really looking for ways to think about how systems can produce um, consistent kinds of outcomes. And when I realized that no matter what the policies were, and I looked at over 100 of them in the last 25 or 30 years, and I wanted to see how they interacted and how they impacted black people in particular, and I realized that across the board, almost 100 percent of them created containment, extracted resources, and punished black people disproportionately. So it wasn't just containment, it was containment and, and punishment. It wasn't just punishment, it'd be punishment, you know, and extraction. And you start looking at these combinations and that's where the meta effects become clearer. Hey, you picked several people in particular, like Trayvon Martin, Michael mm -hmm. Brown, in order to be able to tell a very specific story mm -hmm. to explain the larger problem. How did you go about choosing uh, the individuals? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, m systemic thinking, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's really quite intuitive, but it takes a minute because we tell stories in this country that tell, talk about individual responsibility for racism. And we talk about individual people who want to harm or have say something problematic. And we don't have much uh, energy and focus around the bigger picture. So I'm going to retell these stories for you. And I'm going to say, let's raise up the conversation from the intention of Zimmerman or the what was in Zimmerman's heart or was he afraid to say, well, let's look at the policing in the schools that Trayvon were in, was in. So, for example, in his, his high school, he should have never been suspended for the infractions that mm. he was suspended for. And when you look at the continuous form of containment, punishment and extraction that goes on where he w left, right, at his mom's house in Mi Miami uh, Gardens, you see that the incident was not just about Trayvon when he got to Sanford, Florida, but was, in fact, about a system that puts many Trayvons in that kind of situation. As you're well aware, over the weekend, uh, former President Trump made some comments that were deemed controversial. Mm -hmm. I want to get your take on it after we take a listen. And a lot of people said, that that's why the black people like me, because they have been hurt so badly and discriminated against. And they actually viewed me as I'm being discriminated against. It's, it's been pretty amazing. But it possibly, I don't know, maybe there's something there. You know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts. I interviewed a panel of black conservatives after this. Mm -hmm. None of them said that, that those comments were racist. Your thoughts? I think when you when you trade in racial stereotyping that results from racist policy, right? Mass incarceration was a policy of hyper incarceration with lengthy sentences, with limited uh, resources for poor people to defend themselves in court that targeted African Americans and other poor people as well. But it absolutely disproportionately had a profound effect on black people. It, you know, began in the 1980s largely as a massive expansion of incarceration. So to make jokes about the affinity of people who've been subjected to that kind of system um, is really to reinforce the illusion that it's like a cultural practice rather than the origin being society's discrimination. What he, who he is, whether he's a racist, that's not my business. That's for him to worry about. Professor Tricia Rose, 
What a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much. I want to let our viewers know Meta Racism will be released on March 5th. You can find it wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.